is that podcast, worship leaders, friends, and pastors. Thanks so much for subscribing to the Worship Team Training Podcast and for our members watching us here by video. We're so glad that you're here. We love you, and man, hope your Easter services were fantastic. We're praying for you and glad that God has put all the technology that we have to help stream and to connect with our church family. And we pray that your family at home, you guys had a joyous time yesterday and that things are going great, even especially during this stressful time here. Are you stressed? Let's talk about that. Let's jump right into it. I know that for us, things have changed upside down with school and with work. Um, It just seems to be really heavy all the way around. But guys, during this time, we're so glad that you're here at Worship Team Training and that you have uh, come to our site to check out all the good. We have this going on with our, real quick, with our university site. If you look at now, like members, you can check the events page for things that are coming. And also for those of you who want to try out WTTU.co, we have a free new plan just for you. So check that out at WTTU.co slash enroll, and you'll find the new plans there. So let's jump right into it. Stressed. When I think about stress, I see everything that's happening in the news today. We have this. This was uh, very heart-wrenching. About a week ago, we had a um, news item that came up about a choir that infected more than 20 people. They unfortunately did not abide to the stay-at-home, and they went and had rehearsal anyway. And unfortunately, two of them have passed away. You know, when you see things like this, it's stressful enough having to be told that you can't go to church, that you have to stay home. But out of safety, I know for us, we want to do that. But it's stressful enough to try to even act like we can regain and do life as normal. But the truth is, life is not normal anymore. We have to do things that are uh, new and may seem restricted. But when you think about the words of Jesus, Jesus said himself, to render to Caesar what is Caesar's. So therefore, if Jesus obeyed the law back in his time, so should we. So the most important thing is to stay safe, smart, stay at home, and help. So what's up with that, though? Anyway, the things that we see in the news, what does this mean for us as worship leaders? No matter what we do, volunteers, you may be at home right now where this picture that I had up before about being stressed, this may describe you. I know for us, it's something that we're going through as a family, and we're having to learn to do things differently. But the more that I find that we do things differently, the more that I see a new way of what God is doing. So what's up? It seems like we're stressed about everything that's going on at home. And we're, we're told to work from home. We can't go back out to our churches. You know, that's why I thought this graphic here is very fitting about the guy holding the guitar over his head, just wanting to crash things. Because sometimes I know I feel that way. I think each of us feel that way in our own right. But what are we to do? When we look around in the news and we see what's happening here with 82, 90, 100, up to 200,000 people, we're told, will be infected. The great news is that, yes, we're seeing a curve that's being flattened. As long as we continue to stay safe, smart, and at home, we're going to be okay. But what does all this mean for us? What does it mean for us as worship leaders? I think the more that we take in and understand what's happening with the world, we see our lives at home, it becomes stressful. I I brought this up at the very top of the broadcast. Is stress good or bad? I think that it's both. It's really, actually, neither. Keep going. So what's up? It seems like in this day and age of this COVID experience, we're all having to do different things, learn a new routine, and being at home is stressful. I mean, we're not able to be back at our churches or work or school and do things that are normal, but we're having to uh, be in a new era of doing things that are brand new. So 
how do we take on all of that and not be stressed? Well, let me just say this at the very top of the broadcast. I don't think it's about not being stressed. I think if it's good stress or bad stress, it's still stress. It's neither good or bad. Think about it this way. If your house was burning, wouldn't that motivate you to get out? Would it be stressful? Yes, but would that stress motivate you to do something good, which is to save yourself? It doesn't mean that that was bad. It means that it's a motivator. Also, if you were to get a new job or something awesome happened with your children or with your family <clears throat> in church, those are great things. That could be good. Even like what we just got through doing, working with our Easter services. It's a good thing that's happening. Is it stressful? Yes. Does it mean it's bad? No. It just means what we do with our stress, that's the issue. So even when we see in the news, we were told about what it was 82 at this time, 82,000, up to 200,000 people will be infected. Is that stressful? Yes. But what can we do with it? How do we act in such a way that we can still promote good of peace through prayer encourage others. We have family members in our family right now and home and friends that are affected. We have family members that are right now slowly dying. That's stressful for me. It's stressful for us as a family. But how are we getting through it? It's learning how to allow God to do his greater work, even when we don't feel like it, even when things seem really, really amiss. But we find our strength in Scripture. Psalms 140.12 says, I know that the Lord secures justice for the poor and upholds the cause of the needy. It goes on to say in uh, chapter 140, verse 12, The Lord delights in those who fear Him, who put their hope in His unfailing love. So even when all this bad distress is happening, I think that we do ourselves a disservice when we say, I don't want to be stressed, or I don't want to be feeling bad, or I don't want to do this or that, that just causes more stress. But I found that by embracing the stress, embracing even times like yesterday, my wife and I were mourning about what was happening within our country, our family, our friends, our church, and it's okay. I think that's the biggest thing is that, you know, when we look around at what's happening, we have to understand that we're not alone. We're not the only ones going through it. Our neighbors are going through it. When we watch TV, when we uh, call our members at our church, when we communicate with their family, we're not the only ones. So there should be some relief and peace in that as well. You hear this being said um, throughout like uh, TV commercials and shows that we're all in this together. Now, as cliche as that sounds, there's a lot of truth in that. We see in like the Tonight Late shows, we see cameras being done in a new way where just like how you're watching like this from our phones now, that's become the new medium. Children running across the screen, uh, the screen and in the background, that's another new medium. You may hear, you may see somebody else coming through these doors, hopefully not. But that's kind of where we're at now. This is a new paradigm. It's a new post-corona way of living. How do we live in these new times and find a new normal, if there's any, and there will be? And what does this mean for ministry? The church is coming back. The church is here. The church is not gone. But we will be gathering again. So are you going to be ready? So I say, during this time, let's focus on what Scripture has to say. This is a uh, Psalm 910, those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek, those who seek you. Uh, that is a, a, a scripture verse that's been dear to me in times of stress. And this is something that I want to encourage you about stress, whether good or bad. Give yourself permission to be stressed. That's right. I said it. We go throughout this as, as, as leaders and team members and ministers alike every year when it comes to Christmas and Easter, all these stressful moments in the church. And we say to ourselves, I don't want to be stressed. I don't want to be stressed. And as I said before, we're, we're causing more um, angst and emotion because we're trying to suppress something that's just really human. So I think the more that we 
say to ourselves, hey, you know what? As I said to my wife yesterday, I don't like any of this. I don't like what's happening with with what our neighbors are going through, um, our family. But you know, it's okay that it is because that's the reality of it. So, you know, how can we be graceful through it? How can we receive God's help and pray? And even just times that, you know, those of you who may be watching right now, you may be sick. You may be leading people in your church who may be on their deathbed or may not feel well or they're affected in COVID in some way. Maybe there's job loss. Maybe there's health loss. There's all these different kinds of things that are happening. And it, it's just funny how before COVID, these things were real too. But now that we're in this new paradigm that no one knows exactly what to expect or predict, it brings it brings a new reality. So I say it's okay to be stressed. What's not okay is to act out. It's not okay to act out in anger or emotionally go under and be depressed because those are those are the bad things that we don't need to get into that will just emotionally bring ourselves down. Rather, we need to have God bring us up. So I do that myself with every day and morning. I just ask God, okay, Lord, help me see things the way that you see them and just accept these uncontrollable events and to let you do it through me. It's not always perfect, but it is temporary, and that's the good thing. So just like what we have seen with uh, the choir episode and those that were hurting in their ministry, you know, there are those in our own ministry that may be going through something similar. So Psalm 37.3 gives me these reassuring words that I fall back on. I share them with you. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Again, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. So that's right. Even during this time, use this time to enjoy, and maybe it's hard to enjoy, but use the time to at least dwell in his safetyness and his pastures. Use the time to spend with family. I know that, yes, every day, every week, we spend a lot of time together as a family. It's not always perfect, but we do pretty well at trying to help each other and have fun. But I will say that during this past month, we spent more time together as a family. It, it feels like, in a weird way, it feels like vacation. We have lunches together. Uh, we have our walks together. We go out and play ball in the front yard. We do a lot of things that even cleaning the garage or uh, doing the flower bed. I mean, we make games out of different things. Like even at dinner, we uh, play games and we make a theme of, of our kids doing like a dance off or something before dinner and, you know, different crazy things. Because I know a day is coming when our kids are going to get older. What are they going to say when they look back on this? I mean, just think about that for a second. Are they going to see you and I and remembering about how poorly stressed we were and how we didn't handle things well. And they look back on it and go, yeah, but during when that happened, that COVID thing, man, dad was just a mess, or mom didn't handle this well, or my brother and sister didn't act right. Or do we want to have memories that say to them, man, remember all the games we did? And yeah, this was terrible during this time, but look at all the fun that we had and how close we came together as a family. For me, that's my goal. And think about the same thing in a broader context for your ministry. What will your people remember? What will your members say? What will your team members think about when they look back on this experience time after time from now? We know that the church is going to gather and there's going to be a huge resurgence. So what are we doing right now to instill those new memories? I say learn something new do different things. Like I mentioned, if it's cleaning the garage, if it's gardening, if it's reading a book, whatever, do these extra things because the time is coming back where we're going to have to be ready. So until then, stay home, stay smart, stay ready because God is going to be doing, he's already doing now incredible things, but think of what he's going to do when we all gather back. We got to be careful. We still have to stay safe. So I take these words from Psalm 57.1, have mercy on me and my God, my God. <laughs> Have mercy on me, my God, it says. Sorry. Have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings. The best part, until this disaster has passed. So to wrap up, 
This time is not going to be forever. We don't know how long it will be, but we do know that God is forever and what he holds for us are promises that are true and we can enjoy and dwell into those pastures even now. So even now, be ready, learn new things, be with your family, give yourself permission to be stressed, give yourself permission for it to be okay, embrace the things that are maybe not pleasant right now, but see the inner workings of God because it's a greater opportunity to see how God's mercy works and how Jesus works through you and I in and out and to pour that back out into our ministries. How awesome is that? Guys, thanks so much again for joining us here today. And I'd like to just pray for us all, if we may. Let me do that. Lord, thank you so much for this time and that we can draw near you. And even in these times of uncertainty, we know that you are certain. We know that you are strong. We know that you are healing. We know that you are constant. So God, continue to infuse us with your strength and grace by your word. And may we walk that out in your spirit and to help lead others. Be with all our families, Lord. Be with those that are hurting. Be with those that have loss, job loss, health. Please be with them right now and heal us together as your people and to help us to continue to share that love of Jesus Christ to those who need to know you now. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, thanks so much for being a follower here and subscribing to the Worship Team Training Podcast. Please continue to check out the good things we have for you, the free subscription, limited membership of WTTU.co. Go to that. It's called New and Free. You'll find more information there. So guys, until then, thanks so much for being with us. Remember, it's not about any of us being perfect, but it's about allowing the Lord Jesus to live through you, to live and lead worship in and out daily. We love you, and we'll see you here next time. Bye. Take a while for things that I said too soon.